and here I'm going to take you through our next panel. Our next panel will be discussing on change in consumer behavior and what it means for brands. A big question. Here I'm going to welcome our panel, the illustrious panel that we have here, Ms. Anuja Mishra, Vice President and Head of Marketing Personal Care and Hygiene, Godrej Consumer Products Limited. Also on our panel is Bimal Karthik Reba, Co-Founder and COO Trell. We have with us Mr. Rohit Dosi, Director of Microsoft Advertising at Inmobi. Also on our panel is Mr. Webhav Kumar, Vice President and Head E-Commerce and Digital Marketing at Max Life Insurance Company Limited. On our panel is Yadwinder Singh Guleria, Director, Sales and Marketing, Honda Motorcycle and Scooter India Private Limited. And chairing this session is Rubina Singh, CEO, I Prospect. I welcome all of you and leave the screen to Rubina to take the discussion forward. Very warm welcome to all of you. Thank you so much and a very warm welcome to all my panelists today. Thank you for joining us and hope you're doing well and staying safe. And, you know, I just want to open the session by saying that the pandemic has impacted, you know, our lives virtually at every aspect, you know, how we work, how we travel, how we communicate, how we shop, how we do these events, um, you know, and so much more. Uh, some of these developments have been sudden and involuntary, such as social distancing, wearing masks, stopping public transport, restrictions on travel, etc. For others, it's, you know, merely accelerated the adoption of behaviors which were already gaining traction, such as, you know, digital adoption, digitization of shopping, banking, and more. But what is more interesting for me personally is to think about that will these changes in behavior last even after the, you know, COVID-19 world, you know, or will consumers go back to their old habits? Um, I see five key trends in behavioral changes emerging from, you know, the impact of COVID-19. One is there's obviously, or everybody earlier has spoken about it enough that there is an increased digital adoption. Uh, people are shifting to digital platforms for their day-to-day -day needs in all aspects of life. There's also a change in mobility patterns. You know, you, you know there's less usage of public transport, more remote working, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, there's been a change in purchasing behavior. Um, there's been an increased awareness on health. And there's also been changes in interpersonal behavior. Like, for example, like lots of people, including myself, have, you know, got into pet adoption, etc. cetera. Uh, but, you know, while there is a bit of an overlap in these trends, but the common theme is that the pandemic has increased people's use of digital tools in life and business to stay connected in a world which is physically distant or disconnected now. Uh, and increased use of digital tools is blurring the lines between work, lifestyle, and social interaction, and between domains like mobility, health, and finance. And I actually expect this to continue even in the post-COVID uh, world. And this massive shift to digital, you know, that we've been talking about all this afternoon, would obviously mean that brands would have to increase their investments in building their presence and also marketing their products um, on digital. Brands, you know, will not just spend on digital performance channels, but also on digital brand building. And digital marketing, like we saw, has and will continue to witness an incredible increase in investments during the post-COVID-19 uh, era as well. And this is no surprise, right? Because uh, as the behavior of the consumer changes with it, marketing trends change. And to talk about this change consumer behavior and how to get the consumer love in the digital world and what the future may look like, um, I have this power pack panel today. And without taking too much more time, I'm going to straight jump into my conversation with them. I want to start with um, asking you, Rohit. So how has life been after sweatpants? You know, lots of trends have emerged. Uh, but, you know, according to you, what are the top two behavioral changes that you have seen in the digital consumer that are likely to stay even post-COVID? Sure. Uh, first of all, thank you, Rubina, uh, for having me as a part of the panel. Uh, I think uh, there is a there has been a global uh, shift in the consumer behavior, right? And a massive one in India for sure. 
So I think just talking about uh, the active internet user base in India, I mean, it is 29% up from last year in terms of monthly active users and a 60% up in terms of daily active users. And a, a lot of this, I think it has been spoken in the previous sessions as well. I think the mobile first universe is on the rise, right? Uh, I think India is a leading, uh, the mobile first economy wave across the globe, almost around a four, four and a half hours being spent daily on mobile. So I think the device shift itself in its is a big, you know, change that has happened from a consumer behavior perspective, where, you know, a lot more users are now spending time on mobile. I think the other major behavioral changes in terms of habits and, uh, you know, focus on categories and services, which is, which is, which we see uh, in terms of certain industries and verticals pick up. So like, uh, you know, hyper local services have seen uh, e-commerce as a segment has boomed up, right? Um, there is definitely a focus on online learning, which is education as a, as a category has come up massively and people are kind of learning new things and they're doing it online now. Uh, there is an increased attention and focus towards health, finance, uh, home and gardening as people uh, adapt to working from home and continue to kind of, you know, improve their lifestyle significantly. Uh, so these are, I think I would call out a couple of changes which, which will continue to happen in a post-pandemic world as well. I agree with all those trends. Um, and, you know, uh, one of those trends is the growing preference of personal uh, mobility. Um, you know, and uh, Yadvinder, I want to ask you this question uh, that, you know, uh, uh, with this growing preference where people, you know, want to have their own vehicles and uh, with the gradual opening up of uh, economic activities, you know, that given a momentum to the auto industry. Uh, but I was also reading a report that uh, globally, at least uh, there is less than one third of the younger consumers that uh, prefer, um, you know, uh, going and purchasing auto offline and going for after sales in person. Um, are you seeing digital becoming more and more important in the entire purchase funnel in India as well? Um, Yadvinder, are you there? Uh, Okay, um, you know, Rohit, you want to you, you come in here and uh, share sure. some of your thoughts? Sure. So I think, uh, I think uh, like you mentioned, right, personalization, uh, you know, I think is going to be key uh, when as, as far as, you know, digital is concerned, right? And I think digital is a medium where, you know, marketers can probably quote consumers, right, from awareness to then conversions, probably even re-engage them, right? I think for most of the other mediums, it's difficult to have a single, you know, unified view of a consumer. So I think when it comes to digital, uh, I think just guiding consumer from one phase to another, since, you know, a lot more users are there now online and they, a lot of them don't even know what they want, right? So I think, you know, moving, moving them and ed educating them from an awareness stage to kind of, you know, uh, even later stages in the funnel is important. And personalization is kind of going to play a very crucial role, I would say, you know, whenever you kind of reach out to your customers or brands or marketers want to kind of, you know, engage their uh, customers. I think one of the, uh, and, and this we saw as a very huge trend during the pandemic itself, right? Some of our uh, clients that we work with kind of leveraged it in very, very innovative ways, right? So one such, uh, you know, uh, advertiser that we worked with, which is WakeFit, right? It's they're kind of, you know, a leading D2C uh, uh, you know, brand in terms of uh, matrices and sofas and, and other furniture, right? They kind of, you know, use search advertising that we offer from Microsoft as one of the ways for creating brand awareness. So effectively, while, uh, you know, search advertising is being used as a performance medium, they kind of, you know, leveraged it for creating branding. And then beautifully, they kind of, you know, started with IPL uh, and, and customized it with their products. So so basically, they, they started targeting, uh, you know, users, saying, why don't you watch IPL uh, sitting on WakeFit sofas? And from there to kind of creating awareness for WakeFit, they then entered into, you know, showcasing various products, which is sofas, matrices, beds, et cetera. And then finally nudging them to a price point or a deals or a discounts, uh, you know, phase where they, they could kind of see the purchase happening. So, so it was very evident how they kind of, you know, reached out to users with personalized messaging, 
uh, targeted them really well, uh, offered them products which they they probably you know wanted at that point in time to create that one unified uh, you know experience which definitely kind of you know paid off for them. So I think I think as you know uh, overall in the last one year every. i mean the the overall experience in terms of how brands and marketers kind of are approaching their customers has evolved and personalization definitely kind of you know kicks in and and is going to play a crucial part sure yeah. so we're seeing like you know people are using uh, digital full funnel marketing now across the purchase funnel and not in some categories only low funnel and some categories only top funnel so it's evolving right now i agree with that um, you know i see that trend as well and uh but i want to ask you you know talking about the trends which are going to be sticky non sticky and you know uh going back to what i started with uh whether what's your view you know obviously with the outbreak of um, uh, corona virus there was an increased number of people which became more um i th- i think they took more interest in insurance if i may say and uh, many of them started considering insurance as a necessity to be ready in case of you know any uh, unforeseen circumstances in the future but do you think uh, uh, this is a long term change in behavior or will this diffuse post the vaccine comes thank you thank you rubina very good evening to fellow panelists and the audience uh, you know rubina i think the changing trends in behavior can broadly be classified you know into a reversal of past trends acceleration of existing trends and complete new habit formation i think broad three themes if you look at it there's can qualify each of these interesting trends are huh? past trend reversal i think uh, the whole trading down and bargain hunting utility shopping i think some of these will be temporary surges and will settle back somewhere midway you know income uncertainty guiding consumer decisions or deferring purchase for some categories is surely a trend you know we all hope gets reversed <laughs> you know while the life insurance sector you know we had a much lower impact compared to other categories and you know as a, as an industry But, but you know, but I mean, the degrowth was only single, single digit at an industry level. You you see, unlike uh, most the other sectors, you know, the stressful trend specific to our category was the minor degrowth in the ticket size of the policy. You know, the average ticket size of a life insurance policy being purchased online or offline, we saw a small dip. You know, a minor dip. Now, now, while you know, uh, the the way to to have context, one needs to understand that the past five years growth of the industry at a whole. You know. has been primarily led by these increase in ticket sizes 15 20% every year right so this clearly shows that high value cases you know have dried out across industry especially in the affluent salaried or affluent self employed segment you know deferring important financial investment calls so so i think that's one trend that should get reversed um, that's the small one i mean on a lighter note best dishwasher searches i was reading somewhere jump 10x you know in 2020 i mean i see the maids back in the house so maybe that will too settle down <laughs> but i think but then there is a trend acceleration and i think the whole digital servicing experience embracing by the consumers the strive for health and wellness the e-commerce adoption beyond shopping i think see dc i see these trends you know accelerating actually uh, they were already there and it started to accelerate i mean just to give you a sense i mean this financial year the the direct to customer online business for max life is now contributing 18% of new customers and max life is a fairly large franchise is the fourth largest private life insurance company so so you know uh, these the, they were already there and have been accelerated i mean the health insurance search query has been a continuous upward trajectory i mean we ourselves as a category of life insurance and term insurance experienced 18% yoy growth in the first quarter of last financial year in terms of consumer searches so so i think um, and i mean beyond category i think a 120% growth in searches for online psychiatrist i mean i think that's an acceleration of a trend that we all knew in our hearts is going to pick up right so so i think this whole wellness mental wellness and physical wellness is one big acceleration of trend and you know then my favorite uh, rubina the new and almost permanent habits you know those new habits that have been created remote way of living doing it yourself hygienic and clean living the rise of the smart shopper you know just to give an example you know many years ago the best performing creative for us you know uh, at life insurance used to be 1 crore cover at rupees 20 per day you know and that used to be our best performing creative and we marketers used to not like it too much yeah because it was price and function right very little of creativity interestingly you know this year that's not the case we see experience led creatives you know like paperless onboarding a creative which talks about no medical onboarding you know almost operating at same levels which is such a delight you know because it opens up potent new thinking lines for us so so i think that's that's a almost permanent habit that i see picking up in this in this sector in a category 
do it yourself i think each one of each one of us saw a big surge like never before self servicing in our case leading from the front so i think uh, historically you know if you look at it pandemics have had a medium to long term impact on financial services and you know be it sars or, or you know be it mers uh, sars uh, mers i mean i am told bupa arabia had a great five year run after mers happened so i think from a category perspective looks like a medium term positive trend um and anuj i want to ask you now that you know obviously there's been uh, again a significant impact of consumer behavior when it comes to consumer products uh, shopping in metros at least and i can talk about myself being a working woman uh, and i think about it will i ever pop into a grocery store on a weekend again it's not for me right uh but i don't know if i'm the only one or am i an exception but are you seeing similar trends in customers um they they're reducing their trips to the supermarket or if they're going to the supermarket then you know maybe the ticket sizes are increasing or online shopping is um, you know getting more uh, uh becoming more of a norm even for consumer goods you know and especially in the context of the expected digitization of the kirana stores uh, you know that's uh, at the back of what's your view what's getting thanks rubina really excited to be on the panel um uh, so absolutely rubina i one i think i completely concur with with what you know both what rohit and mehta have mentioned there have obviously been uh, some dramatic changes but i think there are some changes which have seen a fair degree of acceleration i think adoption of ecom has been one uh, not just for let's say the more significant you know planned kind of purchases but equally for categories which are fairly impulse uh, categories that you know we would sort of usually you know frequent our local uh, kirana stores and modern trade channels uh, as well for so i think we've clearly seen a surge there the, i think the interesting thing has been that the surge is fairly sustainable right um maybe 5 months back we were all debating whether this kind of surge in ecom that we're seeing is here to stay or will the consumer you know pretty much pivot back to the uh to the to the local kirana i think we we've seen a we've seen a fair degree of um uh you know both uh, happening uh, i think one what's happened is that we've seen a much larger adoption or an acceleration on ad- adoption from consumers who were fairly uh, reluctant to you know shop on ecom and particularly for let's say products which they felt they need to sort of you know um touch feel uh, you know have a physical sort of interaction with um so i think that has definitely that barrier has been broken secondly like you said i think it's got a very strong implication in terms of one opening up the opportunity of uh, having conversations with consumers about you know with your brand uh, beyond just you know product benefits uh, online and on you know on platform uh, secondly i think what's also happened is that people very clearly like you rightly said right have defined their number their the shopping frequency so you know they may be now going to the local kirana or the modern trade stores um they, they might have resumed that but the ticket size there might actually go up because you don't want to keep visiting the stores but at the same time you want to max out um you know your purchases there but for a lot of top ups there is actually the, the you know the ecom channel where people are sort of figuring the ease the second point and i think an interesting one that you raised is about the overall digitization even within the so called traditional and conventional sectors right so um while interacting now with you know your your ecom uh, with your local kirana your cash is no more the preferred sort of currency and therefore you know the whole digitization on payments uh, digitization even in terms of let's say placing orders on whatsapp uh, clearly also becomes an opportunity over a period of time um uh, you know for for i think categories and and brands to consider um the third and i think more significant point like i said is not just about transactions on consumer products um in the in the uh, you know e-commerce uh, or d2c space but also the ability to now have a lot more meaningful conversation and content so just to give you a case in point very recently right i think one of the things that we saw across social media was uh people missing their you know vacations and holidays and one of the very interesting trends we picked up you know is that there's a very clear theme of nostalgia particularly around you know the one thing we know we can't do this year for sure and in the recent in the near future would be travel 
um and synthol you know one of our iconic brands being an explorer brand right that kind of sort of truly encourages you to go out and you know and you know and feel alive and you know go to the most unexplored places we actually built an entire content strategy around it um and an entire community of travelers where we got people you know we got some uh, you know very uh, very known influencers cat a cat b influencers to come and share their experiences uh you know uh, an amalgamation of all their interesting travels over the year and we saw some phenomenal response from a purely brand you know from a purely um, you know consumer brand in terms of the watch time the average watch time of our content right so very clearly we realize that you know people are open to engaging a lot more beyond just the transactional you know product benefits and so on uh, so i think yes that 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 that's one i think area that's definitely emerged Thanks for sharing that, Anita. So, uh, what I'm hearing uh, both you, Vipa, and also Rohit earlier saying that it's digital all the way. This has a possibility for it to stay in the medium to the long term as well, and it was in the short term. Uh, and and Vipa, on that same uh, topic, on um, you know, uh, on or on the similar category of FMCGs, I really wanted um, uh, uh, you know ask you that you know. the fmcg sector in rural and semi urban india has grown faster uh, in pace than in urban areas and um, do you think digital has a play in this segment of customers as well and if so how can brands kind of reach out to them would you like to share that with us sure thanks abina and uh, good evening to all the panelists so it's a it's a very interesting question um, if i can break it down there there are actually three stakeholders who are you know trying to accelerate this growth right as we speak in terms of uh, helping penetration or creation of new brands for uh, semi urban markets so if i break it down right uh, the first trend obviously that we have observed during the pandemic situation was that uh, there's a shift in online non shoppers to online shoppers right uh, before we had only around 30% of online audience actually being e-commerce shoppers but the pandemic has pushed a lot of people uh, towards adopting e-commerce as platform right for for the daily purchases or even for consumption up, upgrade right and and uh, that's the second trend right it it's moved from intent based purchases to more of a uh, consumption upgrade to impulse based purchases like uh, as my panelist here was talking about so uh, there's a gradual shift that's happening in terms of consumer behavior and uh, more specifically when it comes to consumption upgrade right um, and second to accelerate this right the other two stakeholders are also actively participating in this uh, if you look at this uh, if if you broadly look at the picture right the at home economy has completely increased a lot of people are either becoming resellers right or brand evangelists right so they either creating content around different products and sharing on the platforms specifically on our platform to right so we are one of the social commerce platforms uh, um, where a lot of influencers the share of voice has moved from the mega influencers to down to markets where people are really comfortable to talk in their own language about the product and service and uh, share it with their friends family or uh, the the close network and help uh, 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 discovery of new brands right new age brands so uh, uh, even people are now increasingly sharing this catalogs on whatsapp right the reseller economy has also increased during the pandemic situation so the at home economy is aiding this and the second is also the brand creation side of it right so uh, a lot of d2c brands today are being created it's easier to create brands as of today and uh, they are shunning away the traditional distribution models and they are now uh, getting in touch with these influencers regional and local level influencers to to penetrate into these markets and are also able to create niche solutions at a better pace than uh, you know uh, traditional fmcg companies right so the mix has become really interesting now the consumers have a lot of choice across varied uh, price categories and the catalog is actually coming to them uh, in, in the platforms that they are available in so these kind of uh, uh, you know kind of changes in terms of digital consumption behavior are only going to accelerate further right uh, because it was first a necessity now it's become kind of a convenience for users sure sure absolutely agree with that and uh, you know yadavendra now that you're back uh, i'm going to pose that question to you again which i was trying to understand earlier actually two questions for you uh, one is that uh, you know i was reading a report and it said that at least globally uh, amongst the younger audience uh, less than a third of them actually want to go and do the even at time of sale actually go and be physically present there 
are you do you, do you expect that uh, uh, you know change in behavior to happen in india as well and also yadvendra i want you to talk about you know what is your regional or bharat strategy there is a uh, you know uh, i think uh, the internet users for the first time in rural uh, areas have in are more today than in urban areas so um, are you making any changes in your digital strategy to reach out to them and how are you reaching out to them yeah first of all my apologies uh, and uh, that i i was not able to connect and maybe this is also new normal i have been across many webinars so sometimes you forget to even unmute yourself and keep on talking for and somebody points it out a uh, very good evening to all the viewers and my co panelist uh, as well as uh, good evening to you rubina i was seeing you when you were asking i was not there i'm very sorry for that no this is uh, like yeah. some of the pedals of digitization <laughs> yeah so uh, first uh, coming about okay how uh, what kind of consumer behavior has changed uh, during the pandemic and then what was hit and what was a miss for us uh, honestly we all were on a you know virtually on a island of technology trap because we are talking about keeping the social distance yet coming closer to our intenders or customers so uh, and there was something which was coming because it was forced on us rather than we were the way we wanted to adopt it so early so it was the pace which was more of a challenge for all the marketers that what we were doing in bits and pieces or in small percentage in terms of adoption of social media we had to for some period or a few months 100% do those activities on social media and that was the thing which has happened and while we were doing so i i must say honestly that uh, we still have not completely able to understand harness and harness the power of social media in terms of business efficiencies so we are still in the learning mode mode and uh, i'm sure that once we proceed further we will be able to arrive at what is going to be the new normal because some of the things in marketing approaching and even in the auto industry will be coming back to normal uh, the way it was happening before the pandemic and certain things for sure will remain as a consumer behavior for years as a trend mr shashank who was there as a keynote uh, and delivering a keynote address Uh, mentioned about the digital nature of the auto business where the customer is doing some part on digital without coming to the showroom maybe the research the search sharing and even short listing however uh, because of the regulation which is the way the auto business happen they have to come physically to the showroom to get the vehicle registered and all maybe retail finance and insurance they can still do digitally but to go to the re registration office and all still will happen in the physical form Uh, but the experience of searching comparing sharing and even shortlisting has gone drastically uh, you know very high as far as the social media is concerned so that's why it is very important for all of us to increase our di digital footprint and where we were uh, sort of uh, you know caught unprepared was in tier 2 or tier 2 or tier 3 kinds of towns where the deal dealers own capability in terms of the social media presence was limited maybe they were not having the website or they were never monitoring their google uh, kind of uh, ratings so these were some of the things which were happening uh, on uh, and we were able to realize during this uh, pandemic Uh, that's true uh, i think many yeah. brands were with the opportunity that existed outside of you know tier 1 and tier 2 markets and uh, now yes there has been huge movement uh, there as well i completely and this is yeah this is where i want want to add that we basically reached out very quickly to our network and sort of guided them how to take care what to take care what are the do's and don'ts and uh, many of them you know also started making their website because website is also where we need to ensure there is a brand standardization in terms of the communication the creatives so the, all those things we quickly have made up and uh, i am sure that moving forward it is going to be a hygiene to be there on the social media uh, uh, and the marketers will always have a challenge not to get into a trap of considering that it is a cheaper mode of uh, communication so it will also bring the equal kind of results i think 
we are still away from really evaluating. It's not about cheap or expensive. It's about the efficacy of the using this media. And we have to carefully mix uh, and evolve into a new media mix uh, to cater to the challenges of the new normal. Absolutely. Thank you for saying that. But yeah, that's true. I mean, it's not, uh, I can't agree more. You know, it's not like uh, whether it's cheap or is expensive, but it's the efficacy. That's what one's got to focus on. Um, and Anuja, I want to come back to you and ask you this, um, staying on the topic of e-commerce. You know, it's evolving a lot on digital, right? Um, uh, like Yadinder was saying, there are so many opportunities, right? Today, there's uh, social commerce, there's AR, there's voice-enabled commerce, there's hyper-local commerce solutions, which he just talked about. And I, I just want to ask you that, how are you leveraging some of these opportunities um, you know, to get to your uh, customer? And how are you looking at only channel models? Can you, can you talk us through that, please? Yeah. Um, so, uh, Rubin, I think, uh, before I sort of answer your question, I think one thing that's kind of been, uh, you know, a question staring very conventional marketers in conventional categories, right? Uh, in, in their decision on how should they really accelerate their interactions with consumers has been the tenets that, uh, you know, your brand needs to continue to um, stand for or hold, right? Irrespective of whether that's the offline or the online medium, I think there are two aspects, I'd say, Rubina, that we've been very conscious uh, of sustaining. I think one is authenticity. Uh, you know, how authentic are you as a brand uh, in terms of your solutions and in terms of your conversations with the consumer, agnostic of the, to the platforms that you're leveraging? Uh, the second is relatability or relevance. Um, I think it's very important, right? There is always this, this little tendency or this little temptation to try and target, you know, as many people as you could. But given that this, you know, this platform, one, offers you the ability to go really sharply after a certain segment of consumers, I think there are two things that, you know, we kind of built out as tenants, you know, was to say that, uh, you know, one will be extremely targeted about the kind of users we go to, uh, you know, so, uh, which is, I think, something that, that a lot of, you know, I'd say intuitively a lot of brands are now doing. And I think secondly, you know, we kind of build tiers of engagement, right? So, so brand, uh, you know, consumer segments, which have already been a fairly engaged segment, how do we get to the next level of involvement through content, uh, you know, and through the next level of engagement? Uh, for, for, for consumers, you know, who are in the category, but maybe not really yet on the brand, how do I build relevance uh, largely on account of the way they have been searching for category information. So how do I not just put the brand, um, you know, ahead of the category, but the brand in light of the category to the consumer. So I think uh, we've been fairly brave, uh, you know, I'd say, and I think most marketers have been left with no choice, but to, I think, just try, uh, you know, a lot of things. And I think COVID in some sense pushed you into the dark to really try out things. And I think most of us have come out, you know, fairly wiser, I'd say. Uh, we've, we've had some failed attempts, but I think we've, we've had a lot of learnings, right, in terms of uh, how consumers are either rejecting or they're fairly accepting of, uh, of leverage of technology. And the other thing I'd, I'd definitely say, uh, you know, we've been very mindful of has been res being respectful of the consumer's privacy, being respectful of, um, uh, you know, the, the kind of platforms that the consumers might at times feel fairly intimidated to be interacting with the brands on. So I think social commerce, uh, you know, social media and mass social media at large have been platforms that I think one has been, you know, fairly um, conversant with. But when it comes to, uh, you know, certain other platforms, which I, I still feel that consumers are not very comfortable, uh, you know, when they receive content from brands, I think it's important that the brands let that personal space be. So those are the kind of tenets that, you know, we've been very careful of. I think the influencer marketing piece um, is something that I've seen brands in general, you know, do a great job of. And we did a lot of it with our uh, new brand called Protect that we launched in the entire macro uh, hygiene category, uh, where, uh, you know, we actually went in with a lot of vernacular nano influencers instead of, you know, the, the, the kind of macro influencer choices that usually, uh, you know, brands would make. Because we realize that at this point, uh, you know, getting to the consumer through their closest, uh, you know, degree of influencers uh, was most critical. Uh, and I think that's really paid off for us uh, as well during this time. Uh, agree with you, uh, Anuja. I think the points that you made is about uh, targeting personalization, but also 
uh, doing it with some sort of uh, balance. And uh, Vaipav, I want to, that brings me to my next point and I want to ask you and pick your brains on this, that, you know, obviously to win in digital, like Anuja was also uh, talking about, you know, you need first party data. Uh, and I know Max Life uh, makes um, a great use of the data that they have and can you share uh, some learnings from how you have used that data effectively and what your strategy has been? Thanks, thanks Rubina. <laughs> That's an interesting one, actually. First, you know, slightly deeper. Obviously, iProspect does a great job of it. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I, I, I mean, I really, there are no two ways about it. There are no way, two ways about it. Genuinely, there are no two ways about it. Uh, you know, and first, you know, slightly deeper pockets to get relevant traffic and capex investment is critical. Yeah. So, strategy one: align the CFO. Nothing is more important because without that, nothing works. You need a lot of smart capex, right? If you really want to use first-party data, I mean, people end up thinking. Uh, let's get into prospecting, but guess what? You need more CapEx than OPEX actually to get the first party data right. So, you know, what's happening with cookies, Rubina, is a huge opportunity for brands and marketers, you know. Opportunity comes from mastering this first party data and really turning it into a competitive advantage. You know, a better customer experience demand better data. I mean, brands, as brands, you know, we need to understand that individuals and audience patterns, you know, the channel interactions and their role in the customer journey, you know, what customers want and when they want it. I mean, in every case, the first party data from real customers is going to be the most powerful and useful. I mean, for us, first party data really is about most honest path to understanding consumers, most powerful for campaign lift and the highest ROI data source. Nothing beats first party data, but, but you know, and really, frankly, our strategy is not very complex. It's reasonably simple. It's backed on three elements, uh, structural, integration and deeper in value chain. Structural, very important. And I, and I keep on emphasizing that every time I talk to anyone, engineering has become core to marketing. Let's accept it. You cannot have your digital analytics team anywhere, but within the marketing shop. Please do not make that mistake that, you know, the digital analytics has to shape, sit in an analytics team or has to sit into a, let's say MIS team, no ways. So, so that's very important. The modern day marketing leaders need to accept technology. I mean, not just in letter, but in spirit. So, you know, we have as MacLive, you know, uh, invested heavily in the market tools and the capabilities required to best leverage these tools. You know, in MaxLive, the product manager or the technology team scorecard is almost, you know, a replica of the digital marketing team scorecard and vice versa. So, you know, something as simple as session to lead or session to quote is not just, you know, the marketing team's KPI, it's as well as the engineering team's KPI. So, so, you know, that's aligning the whole goal sheet is a way of life for us at Max Life. We've been on this journey for last, you know, 24 months. So the first strategy really is to get the structure and structural right. We are in the process right now. Integration is the second part of the strategy. You know, getting the distributed first party data together is very important. And, you know, when I say that, I am not referring to getting large DMPs. No, I don't think, I mean, I mean, at least at our scale, we do not need that is the way I think about it. But really, you know, actionable intelligence. You know, it could be this data is distributed, but we all need this into an action, you know, bias for action APIs to pick the relevant information from all systems. So the first party data is not just your pixel data. It's also what your call center executive is talking with the customer. It is also the number of times the call got connected. It is also once the customer got onboarded, what was the welcome call that and how did the customer interact with you on that welcome call? It is also once the policy is issued, how did the customer actually over the next three to six months, you know, interacted with the brand? So, you know, all these data, uh, you know, have to be considered as first party data and from a marketing perspective, you know. So integrating these data items, that's a challenge I can tell you. I mean, uh, it's a very, I mean, it sounds really interesting and easy, but it is very difficult and we are finding it out with so many systems. You know, it's not that easy, but, but you know, we're on it. We're on it. And that's a challenge at least I uh, put up to myself and my team. And, you know, the third part of our strategy is going deeper in the value chain. You know, it's very critical to leverage the learning and insight for journey modification and testing. And, you know, the, the real value of the first party data is that it allows you to move deeper into the value chain to send an optimization signal. So, so you know, uh, I mean, we've been on this journey and, uh, you know, Rubina, thanks to iProspect, they've been our partners all throughout this journey, uh, starting from, you know, traffic to lead optimizing for quotations, optimizing for sales. Then now we're optimizing for value. I mean, recently we've just deployed an experiment on how can we optimize on profit per pixel. You know, that's something that we are trying. I hope it succeeds. And eventually lifetime value. 
eventually lifetime value i mean that's the i mean the point of arrival for any brand really you know how can you optimize your signals for a long customer lifetime value so first party there's nothing uh, not no more potent source of data than this so really our strategy is about having the right structure and building capabilities getting the integrations in place and going deeper in the value change that's what it is about thanks uh, you know sh for sharing that data and yes that's the way to go you have to integrate the organization you have to integrate your data and you have to go deeper in the value change i think that that holds true for all brands and you know i think somewhere uh, you know uh, um, uh, it also works with customers today's customers you know are really expecting a deep level of personalization and unless you do these things you know you can't offer personalization to them uh but rohit i want to ask you this going back to anuja's uh, point that she made earlier you know on a uh, personalization that while at one end customers want personalization but how do you draw the line between personalization and privacy how do you kind of get that fine balance rohit you want to come in here okay so so i think see personalization what i feel is a critical i think you know combined with some level of uh, cre creative and innovative messaging or you know uh, you know probably targeting is definitely definitely going to matter right i think you know previously in this discussion itself before i think we have uh, had called out that dishwasher queries kind of saw like a 10x growth right but i think i i definitely feel that you know while those queries have increased because there was no option of getting mates but i think you know even later when you kind of you know there are moments and when you reach out with the messaging um, you do have a power backup right when the electricity goes off so you might want to have a dishwasher still right when the maid is not there so i think all of this is kind of you know going to matter and, and i think you know all of that bringing in bringing that part together right i think is important in the uh, in the time to come now basically how much personalization is too much personalization right so basically how do you draw that line is i think the motto should be that you know personalization is aimed at delighting the user experience and probably create a better uh digital experience uh you know uh, for the users itself right and i think they have there have been valid concerns in terms of you know uh, privacy as arisen making it critical for consumers uh you know um, to be educated so basically i think you know giving that power back to the consumers is what is needed uh, personalization can while significantly improve life uh you know and the overall experience but i think that power should lie with the user or the consumer right some people might be okay with it some people might not be and then i think brands and publishers have to be totally mindful in terms of you know how they are leveraging data whether it's first party or third party definitely not using you know personally identifiable information which is the pii so they should not leverage it and i think uh, an ecosystem shift will happen or is required right i would say to build that uh, you know atmosphere of trust uh, where you know kind of you know uh, users value what the brands are trying to recommend uh, you know and having that mutual trust that it is kind of you know helping to solve for the overall experience so i think yeah that is that is where uh, which is which will still take time for us to reach but i think that is going to be a sweet spot and that is uh, where you know everyone should aim at kind of going and targeting yeah you know, it's still a young industry and i think if you are cognizant of the fact uh, as an industry together i'm sure we'll uh, maintain the right balance that's my hope you know uh vimal i know we are running short of time but i want to um, uh you know ask you one last last question is that what are some of the challenges that you see in the current uh, digital ecosystem and what do you think needs improvement yeah i think uh, <clears throat> that's a that's an interesting question i mean if you look at the evolution right uh, uh in terms of if i specifically talk from the point of view of a consumer they getting used to a lot of uh, rich multimedia led consumption right digitally when they come online it's moved from text to picture to videos and now uh, verticalized videos right and uh, uh, this this is accelerating the mobile first consumption now <clears throat> so what what's happening right now is when we started in 2018 um, right as as video platform we moved from a picture based platform to a video based platform so we had issues with uh, uh, you know having a evolving cdn ecosystem in india right to enable this uh, rich multimedia consumption on mobile phones right and even the mobile phones were being upgraded but i think uh, at this point of time it's just accelerated the cdns have really uh, picked up in terms of having their edge servers uh, across the country and uh, people today are able to pick up this uh, uh, you know videos verticalized videos on 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 their uh, mobile phones and are able to consume content when i say content today we are able to quickly consume news uh, to anything lifestyle within a minute or so right and uh, on on and everything's on your fingertip right now 
so uh, but what i see is the next set of challenge in the next next five years uh, coming forward the conversations you know they moved from few to many to many to many right so you had broadcasting right um, and scheduled time but now it's going to be democratized and uh, it's going to become many to many many and then soon you'll also have these one to one conversations happening on mobile first so i i know with 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 the enrollment of 5g this is just going to accelerate but what's going to be very interesting is this is going to create unique digital opportunities for brands and at home economy right uh, people will be introduced to new products services online and uh, you know the payments uh, uh, infrastructure is going to allow for quick purchases um, so in in, in there there will be there are still a lot of infra led challenges when it comes to tier 2 plus cities because if you see uh, if you look at the the pyramid right uh, the the india 2 where typically the spending power is between 1400 to 1500 dollars a year their cumulative tam is around 3, 300 billion dollars that is twice the first 50 internet uh, million users in india so they are coming online uh, but the infrastructure has to be ready for them it's getting ready it, it's going to take uh, a good significant investment uh, but you know once they start coming online the faster the push you know uh, the greater it's going to be the uh, to the entire digital economy right in terms of spend in terms of discovery right of products and services online so we are witnessing this trend um, because um, we we are in the space of, of again social commerce um, we have more than 50000 key opinion leaders across all languages creating content for products and services right and and they earn anything between 15000 50000 to um, uh, around 25 lakhs a annum just talk by talking about a product and services right and uh, talking to their network about these products and services right so all uh, i think infra getting ready for that infra pushing more investment into this in infra will be kind of a key challenge but i think we'll be there uh, yeah i agree it's a challenge currently but uh, i also think like yadvendra said earlier that you know now that um, you know i think as an industry everybody is looking at that segment i think it will get solved for faster than it would have otherwise so absolutely you know, Uh, I'm positive that we we'll move uh, fairly quickly. You know, uh, we we'll move fairly quickly in that space as well. Uh, so keeping my fingers crossed on that. Uh, we are almost running out of time. I could have continued this conversation with you, but I'm not going to let my panel go uh, till I do my infamous rapid fire. Uh, this is the coffee with uh, Karan style, or I should say, coffee with Rubina style. And um, I urge you to give me honest, candid answers and short. one word or maximum three four words one sentence not more than one sentence allowed and the winner gets um coffee with me <laughs> okay so are we ready let's go so let's start uh, they say ladies first so starting with you anuja digital or retail digital woo nice okay what percentage of your spends will go on digital this year 20 20 you say digital and 20 not good <laughs> okay but i'll take that <laughs> okay uh out of the big 3 uh, rate in order of preference google facebook amazon pass <laughs> no not allowed <laughs> you have to answer it um uh, i'd say uh, i'd say amazon and then oh, i'd say amazon google facebook okay i would have expected that Okay, this one is a personal one. Your preferred uh, mode of communication: email, WhatsApp, phone calls. Phone calls. Okay, that was honest. Thank you, Arunja. You did very well. Uh, Bimal, we'll go with you next. Okay. Uh, so, what is the current focus of marketers, India or Bharat? Bharat. Is it okay? Interesting. Okay, UGC or curated content? UGC. Okay, which part of digital spends will rise faster, marketing or marketing automation? Marketing automation. Marketing automation. Um, again, a personal one. Something new that you've used digital for maybe last year, which you never used it for earlier. Oh well, hey. Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. We all face to face. I'll take it, but I I was hoping for a more interesting answer, but I'll take that as an answer. Okay, Yadavendra, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, Honda electric two wheelers in eighteen months. Yes or no? No. No. Okay. 
uh, follow-up question is not allowed, so I'm not going to ask you when. <laughs> but uh, for your business in the long run, is it going to be largely digital or largely uh, a retail model? Increase amount of uh, digital now, 25% or so. Yay, that's good. Google or Facebook? Yeah, G. <laughs> okay. Uh, personal one. Um, online panels or uh, in-person panels? In question. In person, yeah. Same. In person. Thank you. Thank you. Vaibhav, uh, you're familiar with this, uh, that I do this always. So, uh, you ready? Absolutely. Okay. Digital for immediate objectives or for mid and long term objectives? Oh, mid, mid and long term objectives, for sure. Nice. Good to hear that. Mm -hmm. Very encouraging. Uh, mark marketing automation, is it the role of the CMO or the CTO? CMO, CMO, 100% CMO now. Fantastic. What percentage of your spends will go in digital this year? We've always been 50 plus, yeah, looks like. Another year of 50% plus, for sure. Fabulous. Uh, Anna, uh, this one is a personal one again. One thing you don't like about digital. Mm, oh, that's a very tough one. Yeah, I have... Personally, you do or something that irritates you or... Uh, the digital medium, the medium, I can say about the medium, yeah, I do not like doing uh, annual reviews or quarterly reviews on uh, digital medium, yeah, it's so irritating, I mean, you like yeah. to be there right in the meeting room when you do these, especially performance appraisal, it's impossible to do, I mean, how, how are you guys doing it, I'll, I'll possibly call you guys and find out, I mean, it becomes really difficult, <laughs> and you can't even switch off the camera, so yeah, performance reviews, digital, no ways, can't do, can't do, can't do. I agree, thank you for that uh, honest share. Uh, Rohit, uh, yeah. Your turn next. Uh, which part of digital spends will rise faster? Marketing or marketing automation? Marketing automation. Okay. Uh, second one, favorite metric for digital marketers? I think LTV, I would say. <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree. Um, top three trends for 2021, digital trends. I think uh, content, uh, UGC or, uh, or, you know, curated. So okay. I think uh, that is one. Second is uh, video, uh, which is again, you know, mobile first, probably. And then third would be the next set of users, which is coming from, uh, you know, the tier two, tier three, so vernacular uh, would be another. Okay, thanks for sharing that. And a personal one, which is your favorite uh, social media, you know, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, what do you use most? LinkedIn all the time, so. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all of you, I think, are winners. You were very candid, very honest, and gave me short and sweet answers. So soon we'll be, I hope we can meet up soon and have a cup of coffee together. But thank you so much for joining me on the panel. I really enjoyed this conversation and I hope uh, you had fun too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rubina. Thank you for steering that interesting conversation. And thank you to all our panelists for taking out the time and sharing your insights. Thank you very much. Thank you.